Good morning, everybody. So good to see you watching online today. We're taking just a, just a quick moment here. I usually don't say much anymore before service starts. We want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. It is next Sunday. It's Christmas Sunday. So we'd, uh, we'd love to see you here with us. Uh, Laura's just getting here now. She's going to be playing here in a moment. Uh, God willing, this Friday night, December 23rd, we'll be having our candlelight service at 7 o'clock here at the church. It will be online as well. As I said, God willing, we've got uh, some, uh, some talk of snow coming in, so we'll see how that all plays out. And we'll get word out uh, if, if anything changes. But as of right now, the service is on for 7 o'clock this Friday the 23rd. We'll have Christmas Sunday next, uh, next week. At a normal time, 10 o'clock, we'll have communion in service, and we'll also have communion drive up at beginning at 11.30 after our service completes. So if you want to participate in either, either one of those, we'd love to have you be a part of that on Christmas Sunday. God bless you. We're going to have a great service today. Uh, just uh, take a deep breath and enjoy the reason for the season. Jesus loves you. Thanks for being with us today.
it is cold outside as we do have to be out. Please be careful. And uh, as Chris is reminding everybody, it's only going to get worse. So, I, I, just, I just love the vote of confidence she gives sometimes, you know? <laughs> but it is December, right, Chris? And it's going to be January next month. It is what it is. Where have I heard that before? It will always be worse. And uh, praise God, we're going, we're going to have a good time of worship here today. Uh, it's a week before Christmas. Next Sunday is Christmas Sunday. So uh, I've actually had people call me and ask me if we would be having church. And uh, the answer is yes, we will. We'll be here. We'll be here. We'll be here Friday night too, God willing. I'm hearing some rumblings about a snowstorm coming uh, from Thursday into Friday, so we'll see how that all plays out, if, uh, if there's any change on that. But as of right now, we're planning on having a candlelight service this Friday, December 23rd, in the evening at 7 o'clock. We'd love to have you be a part of that service if you can. And uh, we'll be having communion Friday night. We'll be having communion in service Christmas morning, and then we'll also, for those that uh, can't make it, for whatever reason, if you want communion on Christmas Sunday, I'll be offering drive-up communion out in front of the church under the main overhang. You drive up in your car, you can show up in your pajamas if you want to, I promise not to judge. And, uh, but you drive up, we'll, we'll give you a communion, we'll have prayer with you, and we'll send you on your way. You will not exit your vehicle. Uh, so keep that in mind. That will be next Sunday, at, beginning at 1130. So we'll see how that all plays out too. But Bonnie's our worship leader today. We want to welcome you today. We do have uh, some, some special uh, some music today too. I see that uh, Ms. Anna Hooks is with us today. As we like to say, she is literally the voice of an angel. We just love her and uh, always blesses us when she's here with us. We're looking forward to that today. Go ahead, Bonnie. You just mentioned everything I'm supposed to read here. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Good morning, everyone, and a very, very big welcome to you. And an early Merry Christmas, too. Welcome to our service. Do we have any first-time visitors? Just family, I see. Great. Our next church workday is Saturday, January the 7th at 8.30 in the morning. All help is welcome. And the next Breakfast and Blessings is slated for January the 14th from 8.30 to 10. See Carol if you are interested in helping with this ministry. And today's flowers are given by Jim Hag in memory of Joanne, Dave Williams in memory of his parents, David and Catherine Williams. And this week's calling club names are June Kittner, the Pappenheims, and Dolores Hawkins. If you would like to be added to the list, please let Sharon know. If you need a phone number, please call the church office. And our last Bible study of the year continues this week in 1 Corinthians 9, on Wednesday, December the 14th, in the church library at 1 p.m. Printed lessons are still available for pickup from Pastor Wendell. Our study will resume in January. And the communion preparation sign-up sheet is on the side bulletin board for 2023. Good spots are still available if you want to help in this monthly endeavor. And our Advent journey continues this week with our Christmas candlelight service on Friday evening, December the 23rd at 7 o'clock. Experience the joy of the season. Christmas Day Sunday is next week. Plan on worshiping the Christ of Christmas with your church family on this special day. We will celebrate our Savior with communion in service. And Pastor will also offer drive of communion on Christmas Day beginning at 11.30 under the front overhang entrance. Come as you are, staying in your car. All are welcome. Anyone wishing in-home communion this month should contact Pastor Wendell directly to schedule a day and time. The Bible study resumes next year. Contact Pastor Wendell if you wish to attend in person or online. The lovely poinsettias that you're seeing, um, Jim Hag said that they will be for sale for $10, which is really a good price, and um, they will be available after the worship on Christmas Day. Yeah, next Sunday. 
Aren't they beautiful? Like to, and if you would be interested in taking one of these home next Sunday for the $10 price, see Judy Leets out, and she will uh, take care of that uh, for you, okay? Any questions on that, see Judy. Are there any other um, announcements? All right. And just so we're clear, there is no Bible study this week. Bible study will resume on January 11th, so we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll see you then, okay? Thank you. Any other announcements? All right. Please join me in the call to worship. Yes, oh, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, on Christmas Eve, my brother's church over there in Zion is having service on Saturday night at 5.30. Okay. So Zion will be having Christmas Eve service Saturday night at 5.30. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So we got Friday night. They got Saturday night covered. Uh, between us and them, we got church. Uh, we got church going. Church going. Amen. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Good deal. All right. Good night. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and showed the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. Our first hymn is Joy to the World. 92, if you need a hymnal. Let's do 1, 2, and 4, Laura. 1, 2, and 4. Joy to the world. Let's let them hear us in the town square. together in the wilderness. The kingdom of heaven has come here. We come to be part of the light. The light that shines in the darkness. Let's say good morning to our friends with the passing of the peace. Amen.
neglecting for our Christian concerns, nickels, dimes, pennies, quarters, whatever, you feel free, just toss them in there, and Christian concerns will appreciate it. We started out with hope, peace, joy, and today is love. So whichever order you want to light them, and just all of them, everyone except the center candle, which is the Christ candle, will light, will light that one Christmas for the candlelight service on Friday evening. So go right ahead. There's a wick there somewhere, right? Enjoy. There you go. All right. Excellent job. Thank you, thank you, John and Gloria. I appreciate everybody that's lit candles this year. We've got just one more, one more to go, and that's our Christ candle this Friday night, God willing. We'll be here for the candlelight service. Bonnie, thank you. Go ahead. You got some scripture for us? I do. Our scripture reading for this morning is from Revelation 12, 1 through 6. This is the woman, the child, and the dragon. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Bonnie. That's a tough one. <laughs> amen. All right, fantastic. You did a great job. I thank you, Bonnie. All right, well, at this time, I mean, what a blessing it is to have with us today Judy's Addison's granddaughter, Miss Anna Hook. 
folks. She's going to come. Uh, God's put a song on her heart for the Christmas season. And she's going to do that. Did he just put one or two songs on your heart? One for the cat and I <laughs> Well, I'm asking nicely. <laughs> one for now. Okay, one for did you, did you want to come back later and do another one? Or? Okay. okay, fair enough. Will you come? Let's welcome Miss Anna Hood. quite a blessing to be able to come up here um, and sing for people, uh, not just because I get to share my talents with you all, but also because I get to praise the birth of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and there's nothing greater in the world than that. Amen. Uh, this is the first Noel. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to serve. devil is 
and what he wants in our lives. The devil wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy me. He wants to destroy anyone that has anything to do with the cause of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I like for people to like me. There's some people probably that like me more than others do. And I have even encountered a few people over the course of my 66 years walking this earth that can't stand me. Hard to believe, isn't it? But my goal is predominantly for people to like me, to be positive, to be an influence, to, uh, to share gospel truth. But perhaps that's where the I don't care for you stuff comes in sometimes. Because sometimes when you and I share the gospel truth, it's not something that people really want to hear. And the devil is behind that, and he wants to just wipe away every cause and vestige of, of what Christmas is really supposed to be about, the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to get into the whole thing about was he actually born on December 25th or anything like that. We're celebrating a uh, time and a place. We're celebrating an event. And whether it was that, that exact day or not, I'm not going to stand up here and try to give you proof that it was or it wasn't. But we're celebrating unto us this day a Savior is born, which is Christ, the Lord. He was born for you. He was born for me. For those of you watching online, he was born for you. And he loves you. And he came to pay a price on a cross for our sins. Because God's word tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So this course of scripture today, just for the next little bit uh, in Revelation, gives us insight into three Christmas realities. The history, the tension, and the extreme power that Christmas actually has. So I want to convey to you with this message today that the power of God's salvation that comes to us at Christmas is real, it's tangible, and we can have it if we put our faith, our hope, and our trust in Jesus as Lord because Christ has come. A couple weeks ago, Kathy and I uh, believe it or not, your pastor and his wife still date. <laughs> we love our, our, our special date, date days that we'll have. But we went to a local theater that had Charles Dickens' uh, the, the, the mini play called A Christmas Carol. I think we're, most of you are probably familiar with that. Uh, who's the main character of The Christmas Carol in the story? I hear you, Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. Now, you don't hear a lot of people naming their kids Ebenezer, do you? No. <laughs> Probably a good reason for that, huh? And you hear even less naming their kids Benedict. But there are a couple. But the main character, Ebenezer Scrooge, what was his attitude toward Christmas? Bah. <laughs> there you go. Bah, humbug. You've read the story. You've seen the movies. You know, he was not a big fan. It was all about... It was an inconvenience to him at Christmas. He didn't want Bob Cratchit to even have the day off. Why should I pay you for doing nothing? Once a year. My goodness. So you know the rest of the story, but for a lot of people like the Scrooges of the world, or the Grinches of the world, I saw somebody, I think, Sadie's probably watching online today. I think I saw Sadie get her picture with the Grinch the other day when she was watching uh, somewhere, somewhere, what a, what a cute picture that was. But a lot of people, Christmas is a time that causes them unhappiness. It could be any one of a number of different things. They could be like screws, they could be like the Grinch. Could be like, like anything, but as we look back and see what the scripture Bonnie read for us today, what it provides and tells us about Christmas, bear with me just for a moment. Those first few verses that she read, 
And I'll read them again, just so we're all on the same page. It said, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head was a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. So what we have here in the future, looking forward to that, is a time when a mother is birthing a child. Now for you ladies that have birthed a child, it's, uh, it's not a walk in the park, is it? <laughs> not a walk in the park, not hardly, as Chris just said. I mean, so as the scripture bears it out here, you know, she cried and she was travailing in birth and she pained to deliver that child. And we imagine that as Mary was delivering Jesus that first time, it, it's hard to imagine that the perfect, literally perfect Son of God would have caused her any problem or pain in birth. But that's just the nature of childbirth. Mary delivered the child. And this, in this verse in the Revelation, we see that as this woman is delivering her child, which we know from the scripture reference there, is the nation of Israel, who Jesus represents, who Jesus came to save. He came to the Jew first, the Apostle Paul says, but also to the Greek. That's you and me, the Gentiles. He came with a reason. He came with a purpose. So as we look back at that first Christmas when Jesus came and the story of a virgin child and being born of the pain of, of labor, John conveys in Revelation these simple realities. The child ar arrives in simplicity. Jesus arrived not to a throne, but to a stable. Jesus arrived in a city quiet, not with all of the lights and everything going on with, with a big city like Chicago or New York or someplace like that, but it was in a small place, a small town called Bethlehem is when he arrived, the quietness beneath that one great star that was shining bright. Revelation 12, one and two mentions Twelve stars, no doubt a reference to the twelve tribes of Israel, and an implied reference to God's plan of salvation through Abraham for his chosen people. That's fulfilled in Jesus, the Messiah. In the birth of Jesus, God came to earth fully divine and fully man. Our theological realm our theologians, our scholars will call this the incarnation, when God became man. God became flesh and dwelt among us. You can see scriptures like that in, in John chapter 1, verse 14. And he became flesh for us, with us, to live with us, to identify with us. That first Christmas, the word of God became flesh. He came to earth, he lived, he died on a cruel cross, and he rose again. He came ultimately to bring new life and eternal salvation for you and for me. He makes it personal. It always concerns me when I'll talk to someone and they'll mention in generalities, you know, about it. Well, everybody's going the same place and everybody's going the same way. And I'll say, well, how do you know that? Well, you know, it's just, it's just what I believe. I mean, sometimes it's nice to think, you know, that everything's all pie in the sky, you know, and that there's no consequences for anything we do, that we're all just going to go, and it's all going to be okay. But, you know, God had a plan for sin. He loved us enough that he commended his love toward us, Paul says in Romans 5 8. He commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For him to die for us, he had to be born. 
He had to live the sinless life. He had to be that perfect sacrifice for us. And it's this lady here representing Israel delivers this baby in Revelation 12, 1 and 2. She represents that first Christmas I conveyed to you today. She represents the salvation that Jesus provides for us. So we look back and we think about our struggle. Anybody here struggle this past week? With anything. I mean, just, just getting from the, you know, the warmth of the house to the car was a struggle for me today. And the car was in the garage. We all struggle. We struggle with different things. Some more than others. You might be having physical health issues and things like that. But we all struggle. As we look back at our reality, our struggle is real. And as the scripture Bonnie read continues there in verse 3, we've seen the birth of this child. Then we see, and there appeared also in verse 3, another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads. How's that for a sci-fi movie, huh? Seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. So she's ready to deliver the baby. And this great red dragon is there, ready to do what? The Bible says he was ready, she's ready to be delivered. And the dragon is ready to devour her child as soon as it was born. Sound like the devil you know? He's always ready to destroy. He's always ready to divide. He's always ready to stick something in there that will rub you the wrong way, to cause you a problem. He's always ready. He's always ready to conflict. In this case, he's ready to kill the child representing the nation of Israel, God's chosen she brought forth a man-child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. You know, this speaks of Jesus. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The devil aims to destroy today. We live in a world today, folks, where tension is everywhere. You can't turn on the news without seeing tension. You can't turn on the news without seeing People under the influence of this great red dragon and what he wants them to do, how he wants them to live, how he wants them to be inhumane to their fellow man and woman. We live in a world where life just doesn't mean much to most people today. But life means a lot to God. He left the portals up in his throne of glory so that you could have life and have it the way that he intended for you to have it. That's God's aim. Satan's aim is to destroy. Satan's aim is to cause tension. His aim is to divide. His, his results are anger, bitterness, broken relationships, shattered hopes, all of those things. That's what he offers the world. And the world just opens their arms and says, bring it on, we love you. Sometimes we're just not too bright, are we? Our world is not too bright. Our struggle, though, is real. Our struggle against sin, against the flesh, our creation. I don't know about you, sometimes, I mean, I'm not going to get specific here or anything, but sometimes I want to do the right thing, and I don't. Sometimes I want to do the right thing. And what is that struggle? That's, that's not always the devil. It's this flesh that I have. This fleshly nature that wants to please myself more than the one who's given his life for me. I've used examples, you know, driving to and from, even, even from to, to here to the church, you know. 
Sometimes I will have encounters with people, and my first thought is not always to wish them a Merry Christmas. But that should be my first thought. It shouldn't be your first thought. It's not always the easy choice, but it's the right choice. But sometimes our flesh gets in the way. So that's the struggle. That's the battle. That's real for each one of us, even your pastor. But that's exactly why Christ came to earth to, to restore the broken, to comfort the battered, to, to lift up the fallen, to remove anger and replace it with joy, to turn the unhappy times of holidays into the happy holy days of Christmas. Christ has come as we lit these candles to bring hope, peace, joy, and love in our hearts and lives. How then should we respond to that today based upon this scripture in Revelation? Verse 6 says, And the woman brought forth the man-child who would rule the world. And the woman fled into the wilderness, verse 6 says, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand and two hundred and three score days. She was caught up. Apostle Paul said in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 3, he says that we are to look to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is with God on his throne. That's where we're to look today. I get in trouble myself when I start looking elsewhere other than to the throne of God for answers, for leadership, for direction. What better time of year should that remind me, as well as you, that we need to look to the Lord. We need to look for the, to, to his throne, to his guidance, to his direction. Because he will protect us there. He has the power to do it. We look to this Christ of Christmas, intention, worldwide, local, and personal. Look to Christ in the unhappy holidays. Look to Christ and make them holy in him today. If we were to read Revelation through and through, it begins much as it ends, revealing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Revelation instructs us as a book to keep our eyes upon Jesus. It touts him as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who will come soon. Revelation pulls back that curtain that's hiding and unveils the drama that Christ has come to secure our future and our salvation. He gives us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. He is the power of Christmas. So whatever scenario you find yourself in today, we have hope in the Christ of Christmas. Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? If you're watching online today, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you met him personally? Not just this blanket thing where everybody's going to be okay. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He died to do that. He rose again the third day to do that, to have a personal relationship. It's this time of year, in the Easter time, that I get more often than not, you know, people say, well, I'm just not really into those religious holidays. I've shared this statement with this church on more than one occasion. I'm not religious. Because religion in my definition of things, is me or mankind reaching up and trying to pull God down to my level. Christianity, on the other hand, my relationship with the true and living God is the God of heaven reaching down to me this time of year, giving me the gift of Jesus Christ. He reaches down to me. I can't reach up and pull him down to my level. But that's what the world wants in religion. They want to modernize Jesus. They want to simplify Jesus. They want to make Jesus' his birth of no effect. It was important. 
some 2,000 years ago, and it's important today. He's still in the saving business of sin. Is he your Savior? Is he your Lord? If you need more answers online, just write in a comment. I'd like to know more, Pastor. I'll reach out to you. If you're here today, and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I'd be happy to talk to you and show you what God's Word says about that, how you can have and know the Christ of Christmas. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you. Thank you for God's blessing and thank God for Christmas. All right, more. let's do Hark the Herald Angels Sing, 97, if you don't have it in your bulletin. 97, let's do the first and the last verse. 97, 1 and 3. You want to stretch your legs? Feel free. Heart the hair. Schedule four in the morning. So let's keep uh, Donna in our prayers. And Jim, uh, Jim as well, as they're just kind of struggling here lately. Jim and Donna Hanover. Okay. And we had asked several weeks ago. Uh, a friend of mine we had asked prayer for her son-in-law. His name was Brett, and uh, he uh, did know the Lord, and he is now with the Lord as of, of yesterday. So uh, prayers for my good friend Linda Six and her family uh, as they mourn the loss of her son-in-law, Brett, at this time. Thank you for those that, that prayed for that. Amen. Other requests today, other than the Hannafords, uh, good to have uh, Don Niemeyer back. I know he's had some issues with the foot here lately. Good to have him back with us. Anybody else? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Jim. June Kittner, yes. God bless June. Amen. Thank you, Bonnie. Amen. Thank you. Let's remember June as she continues to recover. And Elaine, go ahead. Well, my brother-in-law, Jim Foss, he's going back to the hospital next week. He's, he goes back next week? Okay. We've been praying for Jim. For brother-in-law, Jim Foss, let's keep him in prayer. He's been having some, uh, some physical issues. So let's keep him in prayer. Amen. Amen. Who else? Carol? I am Joy. Okay. My niece in Evansville is being worked with her fifth child on the 12th. And the name is Wendell John. 
No way. Wow. What a great name. That poor kid. <laughs> Wendell John. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, I will definitely add Wendell John to my prayer list. Amen. God bless her. Thank you so much. Do you have any particulars? Uh, weight, uh, length, anything like that? So born on the 12th? It's always something we uh, we're thankful for. Praise God. Well, thank you, Carol, for sharing that. Amen. Not every day I get to hear those <laughs> announcements. Amen. Amen. I've uh, I've said to my parents over the years, uh, uh, with with the name Wendell, when I grew up with it, what were you thinking? <laughs> and you said Benedict, but she has a funny name, Bennett. Also. Bennett. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, God bless them. We've been praying for them. And uh, today, totally unrelated to that, today is uh, my, my daughter in Hawaii. They've been fostering a, uh, a little baby. They, they had, her name is Harriet. They've had her for uh, six, seven months now. And it is her first birthday today. And so they're going to have a, a, a birthday party for this afternoon in Hawaii at a park. And we get to be there via video. I'm excited about that, uh, unless I fall asleep first, because they're five hours behind us, so it'll be 9, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8.45 or 9 o'clock-ish, uh, but I think we can probably make it, make it for that. But we thank God for the little area, and we're just praying God's will for her uh, as, as time goes forward. Amen. Who else? Who else? Anybody else? Susie? Sons, Leon, and what was the other name? Dion. Dion. I see what you did there now, Leon and Dion. Okay. Dion. Okay. Okay, Leon and Dion, your sons. We have a special prayer for Susie's sons, Leon and Dion. Let's remember them. Who else? Who else? Amen. Larry had successful surgery. Uh, we're thankful for that as well. God bless you. Yes. on Rhoda's progress. Thank you so much. If anybody else, if you have uh, updates for me or for Star, she puts uh, her request in the bulletin. We appreciate that. Uh, neither one of us are real good mind readers, so you got to tell us if there's, if there's a change in the status as we pray for folks, okay? Amen. Anybody else? All right. Unspoken then by uplifting hands. All right. God sees your hands and hearts. And as uh, Don Niemeyer suggested too, do remember uh, the service at Zion. If you'd like to uh, go over there on a Saturday evening at uh, 5.30, you said Don? Yes. Okay, 5.30 Zion in Dyer. They'll be having a Christmas service there with their new pastor, Tom Norwalk, who we are very well familiar with. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. There's a silent time of personal prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you blessed us with. I thank you for this message from, from Revelation, Lord, not really a Christmas text as such. I thank you that your word is adaptable. And Lord, uh, how it applies to what you accomplished at Christmas for us. We pray for Jim and Donna Hannaford's today, Father. We 
Pray for the healing uh, on, on Donna. Pray for Jim, Lord, as he's looking forward to having hip surgery coming up uh, real soon as well. Pray for him. I pray for June Kittner, Lord, uh, that you continue to strengthen her. Give her the peace that only you can, Father. Continue to pray for uh, Elaine's relation, Lord. Uh, Jim Paws, Lord, the, the health concerns and issues that he's been experiencing. That your mighty hand will just uh, continue to bear him up and strengthen him and, and get him through this, Lord, this time. And uh, we're grateful for uh, the joy that uh, Carol has expressed to us. Her niece down in Evansville, the birth of uh, Wendell John. Lord, just bless this little guy as uh, he grows up. I uh, pray that you just uh, bless him. Lord, that he'd be a, be a servant for Jesus one day. Susie's sons, Leon and Dion, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for them. We're grateful to hear that her friend Rhoda is doing well also. The unspoken request, Father, we just thank you for each hand that went up. You know the hearts. You got you right to our head, Lord. Help us to be sensitive to one another and the needs that we have. Even within the church, Lord, it's as small as ours is. There's many, many needs. Help us to be faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 We're going to receive our morning offering to give as God is blessed. And as you're able to, if you're watching online, there's an online giving tool. If you choose to be a part of that, or if you choose to drop a check in the mail to the church office here at 1288 South Indiana Avenue in Crown Point, Indiana. 46307 is put on the envelope attention church office. And Char will get that. So we thank you for your help and for your support this time of year and year round. I should just go ahead.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark. All right. You can be seated. At this time, if Miss Hannah is willing, if she'd like to come back. Convey another song for us. We would love it. Deja vu.
thank you that are watching online. God bless you. And if you don't have your Christmas shopping done, get at it. Get at it. This is the week. Boy, it's going to be a zoo out there this week, won't it? Amen. Amen. Keep it all in focus. And look to Jesus as the reason for the season. Hope to see you here Friday night, 7 o'clock. What a blessing it will be to have that, uh, that service. Laura is always in, in good voice and good finger movements. Uh, for, for those special service, we'll, we're excited about that. All minds clear? Amen. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, see Judy uh, leads out. If you're interested in one of these the beautiful, beautiful poinsettias, that's quite a bargain, too, 10 bucks a piece. So pick them up next Sunday after service. Uh, see Judy out there. All right, let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. And thank you for the spirit that we have here at St. John's United Church of Christ. Father, just... Uh, Guide us through this season, Lord. Help us to be faithful to the calling that you've given to us in our lives, to be your ambassadors, to be your children in every aspect of how we live, act, and behave. I thank you for Jesus' love and mercy in my life. Thank you for your forgiveness. Be with us, Lord, this week. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Walk with the king and be of good cheer, Jesus said, I will overcome the world. I'll see you downstairs.